Newcastle West is has countless artists, really. I, I just couldn't, you know, if I sat down and you said to me, how many do we have living here? I couldn't easily count it. Uh, so that we, we always have um, a, a source of artistic abilities and talents. And uh, so we try to make use of that. Uh, use isn't maybe the right word, but we try to capitalize on that. Uh, so, um, we have this fabulous space here in the Red Door, the Red Door Gallery, uh, where we organize about eight exhibitions a year. And um, the time we make that available or something like that? And the Geary family, uh, David and Claire Geary, make the premise available for the exhibitions, which is a great uh, facility to have. And in addition to that, our library has exhibition spaces, the, the county library. So we're blessed with you know, places for the, all these artists uh, to display their work. And we certainly encourage both young amateur artists, but we also have a lot of exhibitions by more established national and international artists. We've had the State Art Collection here, which is, uh, a, 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 was a great boon to the town. We have, we have a lot of different organizations doing very good work. For example, I myself was very much involved in the community council for years as chairman. I'm still involved in the committee uh, I, I, on the community council. But we have we have the community council, we have the business association, we have the chamber of commerce, we have tourism interest represented on it. We have the uh, arts and the culture side represented in our committee. And uh, so I, I feel it's it's wide embracing. But the great thing about it, the people who are on our uh, the people are on the executive committee are people who work within the different organisations within the town itself. So the fact is, we have very much an overarching role, and we kind of we know really what's happening within the town, because I, I think that um, what I often find is actually that uh, bodies are doing very good work. For example, the community council, one of their primary objectives at present is uh, is to have a bus shelter. Um, opposite the uh, opposite the existing one just outside the hotel, which is very important because of the volume of buses travelling. And they're proceeding with that and they've got funding for it and it will be going ahead. And they, another priority for the community council would be where we have a play area for younger children is to have a teenage recreation area for that type of grouping. Uh, a mugger it's called, multi-use games area. And again, they've pulled in a certain amount of funding for that and I'm part of the community council and we're trying to get extra funding. So what I'm saying is the different organisations, even though we're the overall group and we're trying to do things and achieve things for Newcastle West, those groups are also achieving uh, within their own bodies uh, within, uh, for the town. And uh, I, I, I think we're very fortunate to have people who volunteer for that. And the one thing that I will say about the community council is uh, quite an awful lot of younger people have joined it, which to me is actually the lifeblood of committees for the future. We started when basically the railway closed in 1975 and uh, it kind of had a lingering debt basically because the passenger was finished in the 1960s and then it was kind of kept open for good traffic, you know, yeah. and for trains to matches and like the Limerick Island in 1973, you know, there was a train to that like from here mm -hmm. and I was on it. You were on it? I was on it, yeah. <laughs> and, um, Very so we'd, we'd, yeah. we'd wait for 45 years in to get the next one, but then when it closed in 1975, the tracks were left there then for 10 years. It's kind of part of the European Union rules now that you, you leave the tracks just in case they might be wanted again. So some of us still try to keep the... I was kind of always interested in trails as a hobby. Tim mm. works for CIE, you yeah. see, it's on a hobby for him at all. It's a maybe of income, maybe a, a, a strain or a struggle or something. You could say I'd be more passionate than you, wouldn't it? You have more questions for me. No, 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 no. <laughs> but um, basically, then, for me to say, myself and a few other people, then try to keep it as keep the railway tracks down. Now, for example, there's still a railway there between Sligo and Clare Morris, part of what they call the Western Corridor. That was closed the same day, but those tracks are still there. Mm -hmm. And there's people up in Sligo and Mayo, and they're saying we want the green there. And there's another group in saying we want to keep the tracks down, even though the tracks are all rusty and. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But they just see it's like simple, it's up to still there as a corridor if it is needed. We have a southern trail.net. Is that your website that you guys 
that is there with all the information, probably the history of the Green Wave. Yeah, from yeah. there's photographs going back yeah. over the last 20 years. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and uh, basically, there was concentrated opposition, to put it bluntly, mainly, I suppose, from farmers and some adjoining maybe um, property owners. Um, now, Shannon Development started um, a consultative process. They had meetings in every field at Keel, the Keel, uh, but they only invited the neighbours to the railway line, like whoever was on that field in their home. But they never invited the general public, so they actually, what they did is they created an opposition. That's my view of it anyway. And what you had in is you had a very strong campaign. And you know, the farming organisations are strong, mm -hmm. lobbying politicians also makes it the whole thing. It's just mysterious thing had the drop around 1991. It was never fully explained. Shan Development never said why they couldn't do it. And basically, that's when we sat with this group of volunteers. And we had a fairly uh, exciting, I suppose, yes. campaign for the, all through the 1990s. With, uh, you'll see it if you look up our for the photographs on the website. There was obstructions put. We, we started walking the whole route then, yeah. because it's still owned by CIE, you see. We see it by my group and that I'm involved with in chairperson of is Western Limerick Tourism. And we are very lucky that we have a Greenway as part of that as an amenity, but we represent tourism providers and service providers for the tourism sector mm -hmm. in Limerick. It's really, we, we're named Western Limerick Tourism, but we cover, we work with Limerick City and County Council, which is the city. We also work with Fault Island. Mm -hmm. We work with uh, Ballyhora Development, Ballyhora Fault, uh, West Limerick Resources. We are also, after joining forces with West Limerick Heritage, who would have a very active group and network promoting, like we are blessed with the amount of heritage we have in the area, with castles mm -hmm. and every kind of thing like that, and, uh, and history. So we, we, they're going to bring that to the table, where we've been probably, as we are service providers. We like I have a bike fire business myself. And um, you can hire bicycles, motor cars, motor bikes. Like it is an area that has a pile of things to do, amenity-wise and activity-wise. And as I say, we don't want to be just a base; we want to be the destination mm -hmm. for people to come. You know, and that's probably Limerick has been known as. Why don't you sit down here or spend a few days and work out a day? But we want to be the place that actually people come to visit and stay. And we believe we have enough, at least in ten days, of activities and. Uh, play, things to do at any weather condition or any activity person between golf and, and everything like that. So that's West Limerick Tourism. How we promote ourselves, we have a website, um, visitwestlimerick.com. Uh, we also have Twitter and Facebook and the social media ways, and we also have a new brochure that we got printed there recently, and that is dispersed to our members and also with the tourist offices and places like that. So we um, get the word out that way. So, like, we work on positivity. We keep pushing mm -hmm. it. We don't deal with negativity. Positivity is our fuel to keep this going. And we believe, you have to believe in what you're at. And that's what we believe. We, need, we have fantastic schools. We've, we, you know, we've the Gwail School. We've got um, the Boys School. We have SMI, you know, any type of school. And of course, the other thing I'm sure Michael might have mentioned is, is the diversity of the community. Yes. Because we have an awful lot of the Polish community here. Yeah. And as you've seen, we've got the sushi bar and, you know, we have it Polish is. food outlets. Oh. We have, um, you know, we, we've got, the, you know, whatever you need is here. You, you don't need to go any further than the town to get it. And the one thing you do get in Newcastle West is niche and independent. Mm. So when you come in and you shop local, you're supporting local people and local families. Your money is going to that family. That's it's their livelihood, do you know? And it gets circulated again then out around the community. And as I say, you can't, you know, we have style consultants, plenty of the boutiques have the bin house. We, the, the, I just don't see what else we could need. You know, we do go through periods where, where we might need more shops or, you know, sometimes a few people go at the same time and then, but mm -hmm. they'll be up and running again fairly quickly. Okay. Okay. And obviously, um, with help and, and some issues, we have a very strong partnership relationship with Limerick City and County Council. They're on board there and, you know, you can approach them. I usually tend to go to poor Michael Collins, the councillor, because yes. he's in the town <laughs> centre. So he usually gets the year bashing and um, he, will, he will put forward, <laughs> yeah. he puts forward our proposals. Mm -hmm. And, 
you know, if if Limerick City and County Council can facilitate, they they do go the distance to to try and keep it all going. So yeah, I would say we're very successful as the county top. Um, uh, so um, that's what we think we're about, and it's nice that we can work closely with the tidy towns uh, to to make Newcastle West a more pleasant place. It is already a nice place, and a lot of people miss it because they travel through on the on the periphery and don't realize what wonderful things we have like the castle uh, to and the, we're right near the castle here in the red door gallery so it's um it's there's so much to see and do in the castle west and people don't realize it so i hope now that this coverage that you're giving us which we're very grateful for will help to bring more attention to our wonderful town